Hey everybody, uh, it's Shannon and I am taking a little bit of a break from Sa Sail Away, which is the legit kits um, project that I was a tester on and I'm not yet finished um, sewing all of the blocks together and getting that ready, but taking a little bit of a, a break to sew up my puzzle mystery quilt clue, my small clue. Uh, this is the Cotton Cuts, um, it's the Tula one, the Dahlia is the, the colorway. Uh, the reason I'm sewing this one, I actually got two of the kits. Um, this one, uh, my kiddo Lauren really liked Tula, and I really liked um, the, the one called Daffodil, which is the Goldilocks fabrics. Really love those, so adorable. But I'm participating in a sew along, and I'll actually um, link that the bottom, I'm participating in a sew along with Stephanie Stitches on Saturdays where we're gonna sew together. Everybody that wants to is gonna join in a Zoom live. Um, everybody else can just join the, the YouTube live if they don't wanna be on camera. Um, so I'm gonna sew the daffodil with her um, and, the, and the group of like 55 of us, 54, 55 of us um, that signed up. Uh, we're gonna sew the, the first Saturday after we all receive the clues. Uh, so I'm going to sew those live that on that Saturday, and I'm going to sew at some point during the week after I receive them. I'm going to sew the the dahlia, um, the tulip prints uh, on my own, and I'll videotape me doing that that too. But I will link the Stephanie's. So if you guys wanted to join in a, a YouTube live and get to talk with a bunch of us crazies as we're putting these together, you are more than welcome to join us. Um, so. I am not a video editor. I don't have any video editing equipment or anything like that. So y'all are along for the ride live and as I do this. So um, I'm going to, you're gonna hear me opening up the package. So I apologize for that. A little bit loud. Um, and yeah, so you, it's just gonna be very, uh, um, uh, you know, not as uh, well, edited and all that kind of stuff as, as other folks may be. But that's all right. Um, look at that. We got a little pin. This is very exciting. I've seen where they've get like other people have gotten pins for, for like whatever they've purchased or whatever. And I've coveted a cotton cuts pin for a very long time. So I'm super excited about getting this guy. Look how cute that is. Super excited. So I'll be putting that, uh, displaying that somewhere. Um, all right, so if you haven't done a puzzle mystery quilt before, if you don't know the joys and beautiness of cotton cuts, um, all of the pieces for this entire quilt comes pre-cut. So they have all of your half square triangle pieces pre-cut. You don't have to do, do anything. The little squares, it's all pre-cut for you. Um, which is part of the reason why I love it so much. The other reason is the amazing uh, colorways that they have available to them. So you can just pick from so, it's so hard to choose, so hard to choose. There are so many that I would have loved to have, have done too if I just had infinite amounts of cash. But, um, so that's the awesome part about it. It comes uh, pre-cut and all the pieces that you need for th this month's clue comes in your little pack. When you're first starting off, you'll get a little um, card where you can do um, a cotton cut block of the month where you can join along. Um, in that, you get your clue um, and how to sew it all up. So we'll follow that step by step. And then you also get your um, instructions kind of, tips and, and, and hints on how to do just a, a puzzle mystery quilt all together, um, what to look for, things to, to remember to do. And one of the most important pieces that you get is this is the layout um, for the quilt its entirety. Th so this is the, the fabrics and their numbers for the, for the quilts um, all the way through, so every month. But you only receive this one time. So um, in here they suggest, and I think it's genius, that you take a picture of this. Um, I would take a picture, oh, sorry for the cat. I'd take a picture because simply because I'll, I will end up losing this notoriously. Um, 
But they also say, oh, if you're looking for like matching fabrics or things, other things that you might want to do, you have a picture of it and you can you can shop, which is brilliant. Um, I just need it for the sheer fact that I will lose. I'll say that I'm putting it somewhere safe and then not remember where that safe place is. So, um, so this is good. So I'm going to need this for this for the clue so that I know what what fabrics are what, and we'll put that here so I know what I'm I'm staring at. Um, and then I'm gonna open up the instructions and I'm going to start by finding my, oops, there we go. Finding my thread and getting this in my bobbin. I'm just using Aurifil, um Dove uh, 2600. It's kind of my go-to for just about all things. Um, so that's that's what I'm using today. Um, that's what I'll use throughout to make this quilt. I already have a couple of extra bobbins wound and ready to go sitting up here on top of my jukey. Uh, let me get rid of this from another project. I already changed my uh, needle, so we're good there. I'm set with a new needle. Let me find the end of this. There we go. Did y'all know that the end of the RFL, um pops off so you can store the end and it's not just out there loose? Apologize for my hand. Right, let's get this guy threaded. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you are also um, doing a puzzle mystery quilt, um, if you've done them in the past, how much you've enjoyed or not enjoyed, what were some of the things that you liked and did not like, I'd love to hear all of that. All right, got that set up, got that set up. Woohoo, all right, we are ready to go. Let's see. So, Fabric A's, I'm gonna put here. Fabric B's, more fabric A. Mm, I really like, this is really pretty. I think my kiddo Lauren is the one that liked the Dahlia, the Tulip Pink Moon Garden. Um, and I think she, um, Tulip Pink really like knocked this out of the park this go around I love the owls um I'm not really into like all the florals and stuff but the colors are incredible so I am very excited about these guys uh these these fabrics so I'm just kind of putting all the A's together B's C's and F's all right we're going to start. So we need two A's. And uh, remember to do this. They come because they're, you know, cutting them in big machines. So they come um, wrong sides together. Don't do what I do pretty much every puzzle mystery quilt is, and forget that. And I'll end up having something wrong sides facing up because I'm a goof. And I don't remember all the time. So I am going to chain piece these, which means I won't be breaking my thread in between each one um, until it's, this is just two blocks or two pieces each. Um, but um, I won't, I won't break in between them. So this is going to be the gorgeousness of cotton cuts with it being pre-cut. So you have your A and you have your little B and you put them together and they fit perfectly, perfectly fit together, which is awesome. And then what I might do is go ahead and have a leader because I don't want uh, any of the 
the funky bunching that happens. So I'll start with this guy. Let's start with this leader and get it going. There we go. I'm going to put it down to, I always um, sew on 1.8, which is kind of small um, for like, I think my machine turns on at 2.4, but um, I, I like the smaller uh, stitch length. There we go. And so I have the needles always down. I go ahead and put the, the point of, this is gonna be a flying goose, geese, flying, flying goose. Um, so uh, I'm putting the, the wings on, I suppose, and right up to the needle. And then I have my little ledge here for quarter inch. My iron is yelling at me because I haven't used it. Um, and then there we go. We're gonna go ahead and get her started. And then set up the next one in the same, like set in the same um, direction. So they're both going in the same direction. And again, this chain piecing. So I went a little bit further, you know, so you get a couple of, of threads in between. Um, so they're just easier to take apart in the end if you're not right up on each, each piece of fabric. So here we go. Some jigglies. I'll have to to make sure I don't go too fast so that you guys aren't bouncing around. Um, let me get my scissors. And make this uh, ender now after it was the leader. Hmm, I'm gonna have to put my camera on something else so you guys don't get seasick. So here we go. They're, those guys are put together. I'm just gonna iron them out real quick. Um, I don't know if you guys know about this this beauty, Acorn uh, Precision Piecing. I use this guy on everything. Um, so I'm gonna set my seam. Sorry, it's off camera. I'm, again, super new. So I don't have a fabulous setup yet where I can show everything that I'm doing. Um, that is, all my list of things to do, but I'm just going to put some of the, I don't know if you're even gonna be able to see it, but just right on the seam uh, where, right where I sewed, um, I put some of the, it's a starch al alternative, the acorn stuff, put some of it there because it gives you super flat seams. It's gorgeous. Um, and not a lot, cause you don't want it to distort your um, fabric. And you know how it can start to, to like shrink and be weird if it gets too wet. Um, and you don't want to change the size, because they're pre-cut, you don't want to change the size of your um, blocks. Because you want them all to be able to fit and you can't guarantee that they're all gonna shrink the same um, when you're applying stuff uh, separately. You know, like uh, applying this to the seams on this block and then in a month I'm gonna apply it to the seams of another. It might not shrink the same. So there we go, all nice and pretty. Then still with them attached to each other, I'm gonna go ahead and see if it'll, it'll let me, if it won't get weird. I might have to separate them. But if it doesn't get weird, I'll just keep them together. Send this all the way through. Again, right up to the needle. And using my little quarter inch ledge. Do 
guys ever get a song stuck in your head and you're really not sure where it came from? I have, I think it's Captain and Tennille. Um, I'm going to have to cut that thread. Uh, love will keep us together, I think, is what it's called. Anyway, I have it stuck in my head and I'm not at all sure why or how. Um, but there, there it is. It's still in my head. And I've been singing it all morning. All right. How's the bounce? I hope the bounce isn't too bad. All right. Let me get the ender. Do this. ahead and separate these guys too and get them ironed out and I'll show you what we have ended up with try to always remember to set your seams setting your seams means oops just turned it off um setting your seams means just laying it flat how how you have it coming right off the machine like this and then you run your iron over just over where the stitches are um and it kind of like kind of marries the fabric with the, um, oh my lord, total uh, thread, there we go, uh, marries <laughs> the fabric with the, the thread, makes them all nice and um, like snugged up against each other. And so that's what setting your seams is. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my, just a little bit of the acorn, what we call magic juice. Do that. Gently flip over so I don't mess with any of the bias um, edges from the half square triangle pieces or the, the, the geese wings, goose wings. <laughs> goose wings, I suppose. All right. Now, I got those ironed out, and I'm going to go ahead and slap a clapper on these guys, and we'll move on um, to the next one while these are cooling. So, F is this pretty fabric. So F is next with this pretty fabric, and then it's getting the polka dots on it. So again, right side, flip the wrong side, right side, flip the wrong side, right side, flip the wrong side. So that is gonna be the same process of putting them together. Ooh, I, I did a little read ahead. I'm excited about what this is going to look like. I really got to figure out um, how to edit videos so that you guys aren't having to, you know, have a hour long video of watching me put all this together <laughs> and be bored out of your mind as I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> let's see, what are some other questions I can ask you guys? Are you all um, doing any other kinds of blocks of the month? Uh, if you're not, if, well, if you are or you aren't doing the puzzle misery, mystery, misery, <laughs> puzzle mystery quilt, um, do you guys do other blocks of the month? Or do you guys have other subscriptions that you, you do each month? Um, I do the open gates which is gorgeous. I'll also link them down there in the uh, description. I do Open Gate, their monthly subscription, and then um, the So Yeah Brothers, so they're So Yeah Quilting. I do their box of the month. Um, I like getting all that, that fabric. It's like, you know, I might not do the actual projects. Um, often I will do the project out of the Open Gate. Um, but sometimes 
you know, you're just not feeling the project. Um, I just like getting the fabric and, you know, maybe thinking of something else to do with it. Another pattern that I really like um, that I haven't decided on a fabric yet. Um, so I don't always do what they say you're supposed to do <laughs> in the monthly box, but I sure do enjoy getting the fabric. And then I have a couple of different block of the month things that I'm, um, supposedly doing. I'm so super excited about, uh, Legit Kits is, um, going to be doing a block of the month. I don't know if you guys have seen it or heard of Legit Kits. It's a foundation paper piecing. Um, and, uh, they are kind of, they have kind of a big year planned for themselves. They're doing a bunch of stuff. Um, and this, the block of the month is a new, um, and, uh, endeavor, endeavor that they're doing. Here we go. Those are the first ones put together. Now I'm setting seams for this guy. Um, but yeah, that, that'll definitely be a block of the month that I'm jumping on for sure. Also, um, they are, uh, they asked for people to sign up to be, um, certified instructors and I signed up I put my name in the hat for that too because I think that would be a lot of fun um and I think from my experience with um there's a membership that I'm a part of called piecing it real I think um Yvette and how she's taught everybody has really set me up um with a really like really good understanding of of FPP and I think I'll be able to bring the you know hints and tricks and everything that I've learned from Yvette I think that'll you know be a bonus in my my toolbox to help folks um, in addition to legit kit hints and tricks that they've done as they've been doing their um, all of their projects. Oh my gosh, the, this new one that they're doing is a, a muscle car. It looks incredible. It is incredible how real the things are look that they're doing. All right. So we got these wings done. Excellent. We'll move these boys to the side and get this one started. So I am fil filming on Friday, Friday the 10th, which means it's the weekend officially. I intend to do much sewing. <laughs> we'll be doing the, um, the sew along tomorrow where I'll be doing the daffodil um, version of this with the, the group. Um, and then I'll be working on my sail away legit kit. How much, how much time do you guys get on the weekends to dedicate to this awesome hobby craft lifestyle? I know almost everybody will be able to say not enough time because I feel that if I could win the lottery, set my parents up, set my family up, my sisters and nieces and nephews, and then just be able to do this every day, all day, I would be a very happy woman. Um, but do you, do you work all week and then have to dedicate time on the weekends to your to your hobby here um do you have littles if you have little ones do you have to sneak it in during nap time or when they're in bed i do not have littles i have three 20 somethings so um when i say i'm going to my sewing room uh, nobody cares. 
<laughs> I'm like, okay, good. See you later. <laughs> We're going to do what we want to do. Um, so there's always that. <laughs> All right. So we've got the next set of wings on. Gonna set these seams. So kind of tied into, you know, when do you get to sew? How much do you get to sew? Do you all um, have a guild, like a virtual guild or an actual face-to-face -face guild now that we're really actually able to be face-to-face? Be -face? Do you have a group of, of buddies that you quilt with? Um, or, or, or is it just you? Or are you like the only one? I'm for sure the only one in my family that quilts. Um, nobody, nobody else quilts. My sister knows how to, to knit and, and still does some, some knitting. Um, my other sister is really good on um, like the resin arts things. She does that kind of stuff. So we're all kind of crafty. We just don't all do the same craft um, as the others. But do you have friends or family that you quilt with? I'm very, very lucky to have met, um, I guess, it, it, was it Grey's Anatomy? Okay, I've never watched Grey's Anatomy. Please don't be mad at me. I've never watched it. But isn't it Grey's Anatomy where she says that um, that one chick is like her person? Like they're ride, ride or die, I guess. Um, I was insanely lucky to kind of meet my people at a retreat last year in Pennsylvania and the five of us get together uh gosh often <laughs> often sometimes we'll get together multiple times a week sometimes it'll be you know just like when we can we're working on a project together right now I'm making a duffel bag um yeah, it, I've been super blessed to be able to, to meet my people um, and be able to sew with them. Here we go. So that's part two. Oh boy. Now the fun part. We're going we're gonna to put these guys together. So this is going to be on the bottom and this is going to be on the top. All right. Oh, that's fun. So I don't have to worry about trying to get both of the points. I can just worry about one side. So because I need to worry about the one side of point. Oh, another thing about me that you're going to notice, I never pin. I'm an anti-pinner. I'm an anti-pinner. I'm an anti-clipper. Um, I will clip if I have to, but oof, I do not pin. I don't know. I'm, uh, I don't know if it's lazy, stubborn. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I never do it. So it's always a crapshoot to, to see what's going to happen. Um, but I'm going to sew this with the this point up so that I know that I'm right, like right there where I need to be um, in order to not lose my point when I'm putting this guy together. So we're going to do this nice and slow. There's not a race. Um, if you're a super fast sewer, awesome. Absolutely zero judgment. I just, one, have a camera that's going to wobble. And two, find that if I'm, ooh, look at that. Yes, right at the tip. Um, that if I'm going too fast, I make many more mistakes. So I'm just going to go slow and steady. Enjoy talking to you guys and end up with a pretty block. All right, so here we go. This one now. Again, oops, right up to the needle, right up to my ledge, and we're off. Slow down right here because I'm coming up right to the cross. Yes, there we go. All 
right, ladies and gentlemen. Moment of truth coming up here. We're going to pull this off. We're going to see. How did I do? What do you guys think? I know you may be rooting for me not to have done well if you're a pinner. <laughs> but I think that that is pretty good. I feel good about that. That one. And then, yep, feel pretty good about that one too. All right. So the cotton, cotton cuts in their instructions, they'll tell you which way to sew um, your seams. So we're going to be going up into A. I'm going to be um, ironing it that way. So I'm going to do that right now. Let's separate these guys. Boop. And do that. Again, don't forget to set your seams. I'm going to sound like a broken record because um, that's the only way I'm going to remember. Because I will forget. We're going to be ironing towards the polka dots. So I'm going to put some of the acorn magic juice on it. And then I'm going to give it a gentle roll back. Just kind of finger press it um, open real gentle. Again, so you're not distorting anything. And then a good iron. Nice and flat. Oh, it looks so pretty. I'm very excited about this so, so far. All right. Put a clapper on that. And then do the second one. Again, I roll it back nice and gentle. Just kind of finger press it out. Don't distort anything. Put the iron on it. The voices of a thousand sewists in my head saying, don't iron press. So that I'm making sure not to distort anything. There we go. All right. Clap her on that one. Show you guys what it looks like. Hmm. Let me pull it out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Look how pretty. All right. Excited about that. That looks great. All right. We'll move on to the next bit. And I think I'm just going to do one. Um, and then I'll do the other, you know, I'll finish up the other, other stuff. So next is a B square here with an F square here. And so those together and iron towards F. So that's what I'm going to do. Pop this together. And then, oh, where's my, there we go. That going. And then right up to the needle against my quarter inch ledge. And away we go. Excellent. So I'm going to press that again to uh, the floral fabric. And then I'll be attaching it to the floral rectangle. So I'm going to press real fast. Set my seam. Okay, with the magic juice. Again, a gentle little flip back. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Donna Ro uh, not Donna Rogers, Donna Jordan. 
<clears throat> and she always talks about the just gently finger press it back. So that's who I hear when I'm about to roll back some fabric. Let's hear her saying that too. All right, nice and flat and press towards the floral. And then we've got the floral on the bottom and then the floral and the poke. Oh no. Yep. Sort of like the, not polka dots, the, I don't know, polka dots in a maze. That's what we're going to call it. Polka dots in a maze. And then it's going to go like this. And then we'll also press it towards the floral. So I'll get this here. Get that there. Right up against the needle. Get her started. Make sure it's all lined up. And then let it go. This press back towards the floral, and then we're going to put one of the finished flying geese sets. We're going to attach it to this set as well, so I'm going to just put that right there. I'm going to set my scene, hit it with the juice. Oh, I'm asking all kinds of questions. I want to learn so much about everybody. How did you guys um, start quilting? Were you a clothing sewer? Had you never sewn before and you just fell in love with it? What got you started? I um, had sewn some stuff before. I'd sewn with a friend of mine. Um, a lot of those pillowcase dresses um a pillow kind of that, that kind of stuff not not too much stuff didn't get too in depth um and then stopped for several years and then i was watching um a tiktoker called um sam rhymes with ham and she's a, a librarian an elementary school librarian she's very cool i'll link her too um started following her and she was doing a rag quillow which was really cool um and that's what got me interested in doing that and then um pandemic time you know there was definitely um mask sewing um but that first quillow that I made for Lauren really got me hooked and I've been doing it for two and a half years now all right so we've got this beauty, I'm going to move it out just a little bit. Sorry for the movement of the camera. We've got this beauty that we're going to attach this beauty to. And again, close your eyes if this is going to make you sad. I will not be pinning, but because of the way they had to sew them, they will be nesting. Nesting just means um, the because they're um, ironed in opposite directions, the sets of fabric nest nestle in to each other. So they nest up very nicely. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna move this back this way because now it's in my way. Put it under the needle, I mean under the foot, right up to the needle. And let her get started. Nice. Sew some down and then make sure that because so this one is going up and this has a little lip sometimes it'll catch and it'll turn my seams backwards which drives me insane I've seen some people um, put like washi tape over here so it's like a nice smooth ledge and I've just not done it uh, but I should do it I haven't done it yet 
And I'm just gonna be nice and gentle until it's up and over. And then I'm gonna check it again to make sure we got no flippage. Nest that right up into it. Hold it together. And then I'm gonna really use my fingers to kind of guide it in there. And there we go, it caught that seam. And then make sure this guy is nice and sat up against each other. There we go. I don't know if you saw, there was a little bit of excess on the top, but once you get it like moving, the feed dogs grab it, kind of like evens all out. All right, let's see how this looks. Let's see how my corn, oh, look how pretty. Woohoo! That's a picture. So this guy then gets pressed towards the geese. So again, set my seam, hit it with the magic juice, and then um, open it up towards the geese. Which is like this. Nice and easy, just a nice little finger press. fighting with me, but there we go. Gotta do some convincing sometimes. Because the pattern needs it to go a particular way, but sometimes the fabric doesn't want to go a particular way. That's all right, we convinced it. All right, I'm just applying some uh, some pressure to that, where the, the four pieces meet in the middle. It's a little bit thicker. But, let me pull this, well, let's see, it goes this way. Let me pull the camera out a little bit so you guys can see. Woohoo! Look at how nice. Looks good, I'm happy with that. All right, I'm good with that. That makes me happy. All right, so that was section 1A. I think I'm going to save section 1B for a separate video because we're already at 45 minutes and I do not want to bore you guys to death. So thank you all very much for watching, uh, putting together the Village Green Small Clue 1, um, section 1A. I appreciate your time. Again, leave, um, answer any of all, all the questions, any or all of the questions that I asked. Uh, leave that stuff in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. And I will see you again probably tomorrow for section 1B. All right, y'all. Thanks.